We welcome everybody, everybody who's here in the room with us and uh, everybody who is joining us on Facebook Live. Um, I am delighted to have all of you here today, uh, especially on, uh, uh, because I am very proud to, to present this work by Adriana Diaz Enciso, who many of you know, but for the benefit of those of you who don't, um, well, let me introduce myself first. My name is Ana Elena Gonzalez and uh, from the Center for Mexican Studies, that is UNAM UK, uh, at an office of the National Autonomous University of Mexico um, in London. We are based at King's College and we are here to uh, promote academic exchange between UNAM and British universities and to promote Mexican culture. And uh, sometimes we have um, a delightful connection between both cultures, as in the case of Adriana Diaz Enciso, who is a Mexican-born writer uh, who has been living in London for the past 20 years. So um, she is half British or half Mexican, I don't know how to put it, but she has both cultures running through her veins uh, very, very deeply. Um, she uh, is a novelist. She has written and published several novels, including La Se, Fuente del Cielo, Odio, and most recently, Ciudad Oliente de Dios, which we presented at the Mexican Embassy uh, uh, last year. Um, uh, a magnus opus, uh, because it is a very, very um, lengthy and um, high-reaching, ambitious novel, which I also very, very strongly recommend you read, inspired by the, the prophetic books of William Blake. But on this occasion, we have a very special treat, which is um, something that she describes as a genderless work called Flint, um, which was inspired by, by several um, personal and um, global things that happened and that drove her to make this, this reflection from the heart, including um, the, the perspective of the lockdown. No? Um, even though I believe uh, Adriana wrote this piece or much of this piece last year, she, she brought herself to, to publishing it um, during the lockdown. And I think it is a very, very welcome piece um, that brightens our, our, our lockdown lives all over the world. I'm so, and I'm so happy to see people from all over the world joining us today. And um, we are going to, to talk a little bit about Flint. And then Adriana is going to read some passages for us. And then afterwards, we will open the floor so that people can ask questions. If you wish to ask a question, please write them on the chat or raise your hand. Make yourself noticeable to us somehow. And um, only then, please, uh, open uh, turn on your, your camera and uh, your microphone so we can hear you. And when you finish, please turn them off again so that um, no external noises or, or, or other kind of distractions are, are present there. This session is being recorded, so if you do not want to appear on the recording, keep your camera turned off. Uh, um, and um, I think, Adriana, we are ready to start. We were very much looking forward to, to this live presentation. We, we did um, a, a former, very different kind of presentation before. I, I am sure this is a more joyous occasion because all these kind friends um, and, and, um, and unknown readers as well will be here to follow us. So welcome Adriana and um, Tell us, tell us about this very unique work, Flint. Thank you, thank you, Annalena. First of all, uh, well, hello, hello, everybody. It's such a joy to see so many friends here. It's really very moving. I'm, I'm very, very happy to see so many friends here. And I am very grateful to uh, Unam UK and Annalena Gonzalez for, for doing this presentation, and to our technical star, with Eulalia Gursa Gonzalez, without whom 
this might not be possible. And yes, I'm very, very happy to be here and sharing this. So I will just tell you a bit about how, how this piece came about. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Um, it's a very strange piece. It, it was started in a very strange manner uh, last fourth, the, on the 4th of March last year, 2019. Uh, I found out about this vet of, uh, of someone I didn't know. He, I mean, many people knew him. He was a very, very famous uh, um, frontman of, of, of the band The Prodigy. His name was Keith Flint, but I didn't know even his name. I mean, I, I knew about him. I had seen him many, many years ago on a video, and, but I didn't know anything about him. And um, I learned, I saw in the metro, in, in, in the tube, that he had died, that he had taken his own life. And for some reason, which I have no idea why, I dreamt of him that night. And I had a very, very intense dream, very... Uh, they're very intense, very vivid, and uh, very moving because somehow I was accompanying him to die. This man I have never met and whose name I haven't even known until I dread that he had passed away. So I, I, I woke up and I found that extremely strange. But I was a bit of shaken by the dream and very, very moved. And the dream just wouldn't go away. So, uh, in the following days, throughout the whole of March 2019, I kept on having dreams. Well, this dream was still in my mind all the time, so I started to write, write it down, because it was just there, it was the kind of thing that wants to be written down. But also, I started to dream with many other people that I had lost in my life. So, throughout the whole of March, I was dreaming of, of the death and of the death, but nothing of these were nightmares. It was actually just very intense, very moving dreams. And during the day when I was awake, throughout the whole of March, I was in a very, you know, actually a very beautiful state of mind. I was feeling this deep appreciation of beauty and of the preciousness of life. And I kept on writing this. I, I kept on writing the other dreams as well. And it was as if I was trying to convey to someone who has, was probably desperate, how beautiful life is and how beautiful springtime was. And also, I, it's important to say, because I, I, I thought maybe I'm going mad. Maybe, why, why am I doing this? So I started to Google about Keith Fleet, and I was very moved to, to see that, uh, I don't know if many of you will, will have seen him. Uh, he, he could look very, very scary in his, um, a artistic persona and I have to confess that in back in the 90s when I saw a video by the prodigy I thought oh this is really scary so I was very moved to see that by all accounts of people who actually knew him he was described as a very kind generous uh, man and that moved me quite a lot and I also saw some interviews with him and by then I was completely charmed and I thought what a loss what a loss what a, what a, what a wonderful man so I thought I had finished writing the first draft of the piece on the 1st of April. And that day, on the 1st of April, I received a very, very uh, terrible news from Mexico that a very dear friend of mine, Armando Vega Gil, who was also a writer and, and, and a musician, had taken, taken his own life the, the same way that Kipling had. So I got really scared then and, and very shocked and, and then I stopped revising the piece. I just thought this is very macabre, this is horrible. Why was I writing this to someone who committed suicide whom I had never met and meanwhile my friend was already depressed and I didn't know and, 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 and this is just horrible, horrible, horrible. And I was, I, for several weeks I was just in a state of absolute shock out of the shock and grief and, and horror of what had happened to my friend. But then, towards the end of April, I thought, well, maybe it's just a coincidence, but maybe it's not sinister, as I was thinking. Maybe, because nothing of what I had written during March seemed sinister. It, it seemed uh, like a celebration of life, like a, 
appreciation of, of the preciousness and beauty of life. So what I did was I revised the piece, the draft that I had written. It would have been completely um, twisted and mean to then adapt all that to, to my friend, to someone I really knew. It would have been so mean and disloyal to these two men. So I just left everything as it was, as I had been writing it dedicated to Kitsin. And I wrote a, a, a final part in which I talk about my friend Armando. And that's the story. And then in lockdown this year, because I, I, I haven't tried to publish it like properly, like a proper printed book, but during lockdown, I felt, um, well, it's springtime again, and, 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 and you, surely you remember how intense were the first weeks and months of lockdown. And how beautiful, I, I don't know anywhere else, but in, in the UK, the spring was one of the most gorgeous springs we've had in years. Or maybe it felt like that because we were in such a horrible situation. So I felt this book has to come out in springtime. Again, yeah, I mean, it was written in springtime, it has to come in spring again. And if it has to be as an ebook and self published, so be it. But I, want, I wanted to offer something that could be in a way some kind of hope, which I hope, the, I, I hope that the book is a hopeful piece of writing despite coming from somewhere so sad. So that's why I, I publish it in springtime and also feeling, well, none of us knows who's going to survive this thing. So why to keep the books in the drawer? Let's just, let's just help out. <laughs> yes, Adriana. Um, it, it is very moving to know what's the story behind it. But even if you don't until the very end, um, there is this conjunction of the springtime and death that reminded me of, of, of T.S. Eliot, A April is the cruelest month, no? which is in turn um, an allusion to, to Chaucer and, and the significance of April as a month uh, of, uh, in which we transform our lives and uh, something seems to have been left behind. No? Um, mm. so, so the significance of your deciding to, to to get the book out, I think, is, is very powerful. And um, also because of the way the book looks, because you have a fondness for images as well. I mean, for actually manipulating images and creating uh, these colorful um, uh, images, like as in the cover of, of Flint, which I think speaks of the bursting life you you are referring to, no? So that that kind of imagery, I think, um, is such a, a counterpoint to the sadness of, of death that it does manage to to take you to ask the question: Why why um, can these two things be together at the same time, no? And how, well, it, how you can join them to, yeah, to put them together. Well, I would love to be able to do that really, really properly, like my adored William Blake did, but I, I, I don't have the ability to do that. But this time the cover was, um, I wanted the cover to have bloom, really, spring blossoms. And uh, I, mean, I didn't want it to be obvious. Uh, I, I wanted it just to be spring and 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 and, and and, and at the same time being an elegy to, 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 this, to this man. So I took a picture of, of one of the, I mean, I was sort of shielding, but my doctor allowed me to go to the park, thank goodness. So uh, this was um, a tree, but I, I, I think it's a cherry tree. And I took the picture just around the corner from, from my house. And then the green part, well, those who are, fans of the prodigy or Kipling might notice why it is so green and if you don't then you have to find out that it's a kind of a it's a kind of a, a, a homage <laughs> to to the singer and then it will be really electrical colors which I think he might have liked and uh, but the tree the tree didn't look that electrical but it looked absolutely beautiful and I thought well this this is going to be the cover of the of the book and I have never designed a cover in my life and probably you can tell but I really enjoyed myself doing that during lockdown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I said so also because for the other book, you also uh, showed uh, some images, but today we are going to concentrate on, on <laughs> the end. Um, and what about the title? Because the title is another very rich, elusive word, um, very suggestive of many different things beyond oh, the, the, yes. the evident aspect of it being a reference to the, the, the surname of Keith Flint. Yes, I... I... I, I decided to, to, to use uh, that word as a title because one, if you look in the dictionary, one of the several meanings of flint is uh, fire started. And, uh, and that was like the, 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 the hit, the, 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 one, of, one of the greatest hits of, of the band. And, uh, and it, the, the official video sort of immortalized Kit Flint in a quite wonderful self-portrait. So his surname and five starter were the same thing. So I thought, well, that, that's, uh, that, that's a name. <laughs> that's the title. <laughs> and, and well, taking us back to the, the, um, the inspiration of, of Keith Flint. Yes, the video you mentioned is quite scary. <laughs> and I don't know how, it, how much it permeated because you, you describe it as a, a very sophisticated piece of performance, no? And there, within your writing, there is this recurrent uh, allusion to dancing, uh, this, this sort of dance macabre where, where something is going on and you don't know whether it is horrifying or beautiful. Again, once again, the conjunction of, of, of both extremes. Um, can yes. you tell us a little bit about that, yeah, the gothic aspect of it? Yes, what happened is um, I'm really not into electronic music at all, uh, apart from Radiohead, if you can call that electronic music, I guess. So, but I have heard um, 20 years ago, 20 odd years ago, I don't know, the, the Path of the Land, which was this very big album from the Prodigy, and I have recognized that even though it wasn't the kind of music that I followed, it was really good. But uh, I had seen one video, the brief video, and that really freaked me out. And I thought, well, uh, that's just scary. <laughs> and, um, but when this happened, when I had a dream and I started writing this piece, and it, it, it was becoming something important in my inner life. And I was mystified. I even told my therapist, am I going, am I going mad? And she said, no, no, don't worry, you are not mad. So I continued <laughs> writing. But I started to, to, to look at what he did, to look at the videos and the video which has scared me, scared me. I saw it again and I thought, well, it, it, it is scary, but it's also very, very good. <laughs> and, uh, and then I saw the video of Firestarter, which I have never seen, believe me or not. And I thought, this is just pure genius. This is absolutely cool. <laughs> so, but then I saw videos of them live and I was mesmerized of, of the, 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 the way they, 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 they managed to, to control the, 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 the massive audience and, and, and I, I just, but I didn't understand it very well because it's not the kind of music that I, I followed. I'm more like a rocker or early music. Those are my two mm -hmm. passions. So I thought, I, I want to understand this, but I, I, I felt I don't really understand it. And I thought, well, maybe it's another generation, but not quite. But then I remembered how I love uh, rock music and, and not particularly soft. And I love, for instance, the Who smashing guitars. And I thought, well, this is another kind of thing like that. that I, I'm trying to understand the kind of tribal energy behind uh, what we call pop music. Mm -hmm. And it's really, uh, well, it's a mystery what happens there. So I, I, I try to understand the kind of work that he did. And at the same time, there are many, many questions came to me, like um, how long can you do something like that? Because he, he obviously uh, well gave himself completely to these insane performances. And, and I felt, how, how long can you, can you do that without breaking that? And I, I'm not saying that that's why he, he, he died at all. I don't know, nobody knows. But I, 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 I have many questions and, and they are not original questions. There is, it has been questioned a lot how much massive adoration 
how much impact does it have on the person who is just a human being doing what he or she likes. Mm -hmm. It's a very mysterious thing. So I'm trying to unravel that at the same time that I'm trying to unravel the, um, the dreams that kept on coming to me throughout the whole of, of, um, of March 2019. Yes, it is this idea of accompanying a stranger. And that I think is one of the, the, the things that struck me most, how, how there is this, this feeling of compassion that you use the image of the tunnel quite a lot, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so how, how to pour that compassion through that dark tunnel and accompany the, the, the soul in pain no, in, in that uh, very terrible trial. No? Mm -hmm. But uh, how, how about you read something for us, Adriana? Sure, yes. So we can have a taste of, of, of Flint. Yeah, so I chose some fragments. I mean, the piece is very long and it goes on and on and on, but I chose some fragments. This, this one is part of the first dream. Did you come to my dreams that night seeking a stranger's comfort? Did I in dreaming seek you out to stretch a hand? Say with the language of one common heart how sorry I was a life had come to end like this? And how did I reach out in sleep's twilight on that first night of your disowning? Was it your soul that tore the veil in random striving to be washed up in shores of some stray care? I used to fear you. That house of nightmares, no doors, the windows bordered over with opaque mesh that looks like vets for warning, nothing out there, no world to go back to, no other path than a ceaseless loop of the soul suffocation, forever round and round, sprouting dirty water, the peeling walls, the morbid dereliction, the sinister soothsayer with smooth painted skin, the alligator smiling is no in embracing of the dark. And you, imp, infernal dervish, entrancing in your dance of rage, though polish raw, a beckoning, a menace, tangled in a phantom weave woven by you, banging your head against that gap in the smash wall, then taking flight, a swirl of abandon, deliverance, but where to? Through that passage we walk, void and dense, me leaving you like a reverse or fails, unafraid to look back, walk back with you all the way to there where you've chosen to go. Where we were now I cannot say. There was no light nor darkness, no discernible walls, nor doors or windows. If we weren't closed, and we were, it was by shadows, thick like volcanic ash. Words are not the means to tell of that place's utter loneliness. Was it a bed you lay upon? It was so hard to see. You were passing, a drawn, mute stretch of no time impregnated with the suffering starkness of your face. As if you didn't stop saying words that weren't audible, didn't stop suffering, didn't stop dying. A flurry of sorrow that might have been fear, but mostly desolation, as you lay clasped by that unsettling twilight, that dimness made of absence of light or shades. I held your hand and also voiceless talked to you. Can't remember the substance of this talking, but I know I was not afraid or shaken. Everything I was in that no place and timelessness was a tranquil pool of care compassion unobstructed shining with piercing glint because you were a stranger because nothing held me to you and nothing held me there but the will to walk with you as you enter the unknown land look spring blossoms dots of white and gentle pink swaying in the harsh wind beneath leaden storm clouds suspended for a moment to mimic eternity in our souls and then this, this part has to do with what you were saying about the dancing and all that. And I hope that you will excuse my, my pronunciation, <laughs> my Mexican pronunciation. Dance, swirl, whirlwind, don your primeval mask, celebration, pandemonium, immolation. This too means to be human. A serious tongue in cheek, 
drenched in sweat, raving, spitting, swearing amidst a neither lightning storm disjointing time. Charge, wild animal, and fluorescent, berserk, fright and rapture center of a fallen age, goaded now, rushed the valley crammed with faithless souls dying of thirst. Teaser, agitator, Neptune of the human swill, squall and wheel of fire, clown, anarchic, furison, lawless high priest swathed in ravaged skin, unholy trinity, the exorcist, the demon, the possessed, Blake's orc, freedom fighter shackled by your savored pain, Prometheus, who stole the flame to bring the chill. Look again, it's springtime, I say, still cold. The wind blows wild, but the magnolia starts. Flesh, okay. hmm? Flesh incendiary and soft. It is oblivious to the ruminations in your obdurate head. This tree, it unfolds, it endures, it blooms quietly, and that's the thrust of its defiance. Beauty, beauty, I want you to see. And then this part I'm going to read is what I wrote when I took the piece again after my friend Armando had passed away. Uh, is the part I wrote in the end when I mentioned the death of my friend. A month later, almost to the day, and the stream I followed on the trail of dreams is stopped and cracks. You've just been laid to rest, the path signaled for you with fire in the sky. Across the ocean, macabre mirror dance, another man takes the same leap. Above my head, the glass chatters, the mirror and the sky. The clash is made of silence, death, broken, gone. Dust he followed, and snared in small hours, alone and dearest friend. I stop these words. I'm scared, you see. It's dark, it's unendurable. That final dance, it's flare like mockery. If a lesson, imparted by whom, and why, and what's the moral? Can't touch these pages. I stay away. I am away, transfixed, day after day, staring blankly into space. All this talking to a stranger, someone who's here no more, invoking life, and him just about to go, without her knowing, no one near to stop him. And why wasn't I breathing runes of beauty into his ear, scooping these worlds like ore from living veins to drop into his hands? all the while living, when he at least was still the side of hope. Can't find any light, no meaning, just that, obtuse, his random pirouettes. Or did you have something to tell him? Then I been to slow as cry, it's much too late now. He was much love and he's no more. He's left an orphan son. And I'm going to end with something uh, in the end of the book as well, which is, I think, a bit more hopeful <laughs> than this part that is so sad. And in this, I mentioned also my very dear friend, Rita Guerrero, who, who passed away nine years ago. I dream all the time of her, but during the time when I was writing this piece, she keep, kept on coming back to my dreams more and more and more. So when I say she, it, it's her. <laughs> No one can stop now the leaves from budding, the earth from gushing forth with will to live. I learned this when she died. It was March too, and beauty a torrent unleashed on, on me from sky and earth that drenched me with as much force as my grief. It was like this, the cherry ruffled pink orbs soft and weightless on my hand. The feast of color, scent, and charm, a relentless reminder of the incorruptible precision of the force we call life. She knew, 
In her last interview, she talks of holiness, how she discovered it one day in the purple throb of jacarandas igniting her hometown. Wind and rain have shaken many blossoms as I write these final words. We feel them shower on us, iridescent. Their caress so soft, it's almost as if they weren't there. And it's so generous, that airy hand, that on stripping the boughs, it lays a soft carpet of petals at our feet. Even with gaze downward, no difference between heaven and earth. I would she found you, there where you are now. She who knew these things, who loved this world so much. But then there are so many I wouldn't trust to her. My friend needs her now. He must be scared, so lonely there in blindness of despair. She loved him too. Still, I would she found you. I would you knew. No pain will be left unclean, not even yours. The earth will glow, rejoice, and you will be joining in. Even as the petals fall in the breeze like dreamy curtains, confetti, the gentlest touch, there are more blooming and more. The pulse is unquenchable. Beauty is another thing we can't comprehend, but it sustains us. That's what I want to tell you. It's springtime. Breathe. Well, thank you. I'm clapping. <laughs> um, that, that, that was fantastic, Adriana. People are clapping, if you can tell, from, from the screen reaction. We're trying to, to capture that um, with, with what little resources this uh, avails us with, but um, it's better this than, than nothing. Okay, so um, I think it, it, it is um, so important for humanity to be able to preserve contact, even though the, the means, we only notice sometimes the imperfections, but we can feel the warmth and, and the appreciation uh, of the people who are present here. And now I would like to open the floor to questions from the audience. And if you wish to ask a question live, you, you may uh, request permission and then um, please turn on your camera and your microphone. And thank you for all the beautiful messages that you are putting on, on the chat. It, it's really, really moving. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> Okay, uh, Luis Torres, uh, are you, or who is it? Um, yes, uh, well, hello, it's lovely to, to see you, both of you. I'm really happy to, to see you. Hello. Um, so, well, I, I still need to process all this. I think this is what it makes a, a really good piece of art when you really need to think about it and process what, what you heard and what you receive from it. So it's, it's really touching and it, I find it really, really creative and very, very uh, unique in many ways. But the question is where we can buy it. That's, that's, my, that's my burning question now. That's a very good question. And you can, you can buy it in my web page, which is, which is com, And we will let, can we put the link to the whole thing on the on the chat, and we will put the, the link on the chat on a moment. But yes, meanwhile, please. in case technology fails, write D I A Z E N C I S O. Oh, there's a link. There's a link in the in the chat. And one important thing also: a uh, one third of the proceeds is going to the a uh, uh, national. I always forget a. Uh, National Suicide Prevention Alliance in the UK and another third of the proceedings is going to the NHS because that was that's another of the reasons why I published it in lockdown. I wanted to give something and I didn't know what I could give when I was not allowed to go out of my house. So, so um, it, it will be great if, if, if you can buy it. It's very cheap and, and, and one third will go to the National Suicide Prevention Alliance and another third to the NHS here in the UK. And may I add that, sorry, um, by some very peculiar coincidence, but that seems to be the pattern with this work, 
Today is the World uh, Suicide Prevention Day. So it is more than more than apt. Yes. Yes, we found out this morning is very apt, I suppose. <laughs> Thank you, Edward. Very nice to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Would anyone else like to ask a question? If, yes, uh, Sandra, please. Uh, you, are, you are muted, Sandra. Okay, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, how nice oh. to see you. Hello. Oh, Diana. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. I um, I knew Armando from from childhood, and um, you you made me cry. And, um, I thank you so much for your work, for your beautiful, beautiful. This is full of love and light, and uh, I have been dreaming about him a lot too. And I have been dreaming about him uh, singing. <laughs> and dancing and with his hair with his chinos <laughs> in the air and and thank you gracias Adriana gracias Sandra gracias gracias por estar aquí gracias gracias okay we have some some questions in in the chat <laughs> oh Vero gracias Vero um, Diana was asking about your writing in, in Spanish or English. Would you like to comment a little bit on that? Yes, and also to tell you, Diana, that you are the, one of the five persons who won the free download, but I, I've tried to send it to your email and it bounces back. So if you could send us later your, your email again, you, you receive the book. Yes, I, 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 I've been living in, in the UK for 21 years, so many things now I started writing in English instead of in Spanish. And it worries me a bit because I don't want to lose the Spanish. And I do write in Spanish as well, but many things just come in English. And this piece started, it, it immediately came in English. I, I, I did not even consider writing it in Spanish. And it's, it's a strange process. I think, at least because I dream in English, I, I think in English, even though my, my shopping list is in both languages. <laughs> And I speak to animals in Spanish. I don't know why. <laughs> That's I can I can totally understand the. I, I was brought up in Mexico, although I'm British. Oh really? Oh. So I was brought up in Guanajuato. So I totally understand oh, wow. the idea that certain parts of your life are different. That's why I found it fascinating that your writing is in en amazing English that I couldn't put together poetry that that is so beautiful. And the idea that that comes to you in English rather than Spanish is fascinating. I think I, I, I take it a bit as if, it, as if I were writing in a different genre. Um, I wrote poetry and fiction and I used to write lyrics for, 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 for a rock band. And mm. So I take writing in another language just like another genre. It's like another yeah. thread to my, to my voice as a writer. So I find it quite interesting. But, oh, thank you, Vero, for your comment. I love you, Vero. And uh, I, but I don't want to lose the Spanish. So... I've started yeah. writing a new novel and I've started in English, but I have the mad project of writing it in English and in Spanish at the same time. Oh, because well, I, I hope I'll manage. I, I shouldn't be saying this because maybe I won't, but. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. No, thank you very much. And um, I'll, I'll send my email to Ana Elena in just thank or you. to you in the chat now. <laughs> Great. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you, you very much. much. That's interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question, comment, complaint? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, we have a question from Raúl Suárez. Hello, Raúl. Um, he asks about how you develop your plot and characters. Could you tell us about the writing process, your, your work day by day? Oh, plot and characters. I mean, you mean in, in, in my fiction? I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, how can I answer this? I think they they grow they they grow on their own uh, i start with a kind of minimal idea or sometimes a scene i remember perfectly well how the first scene of la fe for instance my first novel uh, many many years ago when i lived in mexico city i was walking towards the house of a friend crossing the parque españa in uh, colonia condesa and suddenly i had this scene which was actually the 
the, the, the first scene of the second part of the novel. And from there, things start to grow. And, and, and when you start writing, you take, you don't know what, what uh, like with this novel I'm writing now, I have no idea where it's going. And, and maybe some writers do, but I, I'm one of those who don't. <laughs> but, I, but you start to develop things from, from the first scene or the first idea, and, and they just grow. But I, I really don't know how. <laughs> Tough question. But thank you, Adriana. Um, Adrián Muñoz would like to ask a question. Hello, Adrián. Hi, I, I, I mean, you can, can you see me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I can't see myself, but never mind. Uh, congratulations, uh, Adriana. Thank you. Um, well, I reckon it is rather hard to write on such painful issues. I can sense the sorrowful bafflement, right? Um, but then at the same time, writing, of course, can be therapeutic. It can be a, a, a nice way with which to deal with all of this pain and, um, I don't know, just, well, again, bafflement. So I applaud the fact that you uh, allow hope and rebirth to shine in your in your book. Um, this is quite um, precious, right? So um, that's something I, I celebrate. Uh, but then I'm going to ask a completely different thing. You no, know, that was like just an appraisal. Of course, I will read the thing <laughs> completely, um, eventually. Um, but what would be the, the biggest challenges that you faced in self-publishing? So how was the editing process? Did you at some point feel a little bit like William Blake, like doing your own stuff? <laughs> How was well, it? William Blake is not a very good example to follow in self-publishing because, for instance, of Jerusalem, his greatest prophetic poem, he didn't sell one single copy. So <laughs> if I compare, and I wouldn't compare to him in any, in any way, of course, but comparing sales, I've, I've done much better with this book than him. I, I, but I, that doesn't mean I've sold many by any stretch of the imagination. The experience has been <laughs> very difficult. I have discovered that I, I don't have any talent for self-promoting my work. I sort of knew it, but um, I am terrified by, by, by what I found, that you, you have to promote things through all the online world. And I, I struggle a lot with online reality, but it seems it's the only way you can, if you want to self-promote your stuff, it has to be online. And I have found myself almost incapable of doing it or of understanding and at moments it seems to me very seedy it's like going into, <laughs> into a seedy bar <laughs> and i i'm struggling i don't know if i'll I, i'm the best person to do this kind of thing but well i'm trying but i'm, I'm finding it incredibly hard Incre incre incredibly hard i have, I have to confess that so if, if any of you are, are better than me please uh, spread the word because i'm i'm hopeless <laughs> Thank you, Adrián. Very nice to see you. Um, Veronica has written a, an alternative title that I think is worth reading. Yes. Uh, the Song of the Psychopomp. <laughs> what, yes, Vero. Oh, that, that, uh, um, the That's, Lamp in the Darkness, yes. Mm. Yeah, that could be Vero. Vero is a very, very good friend of many, many years and a wonderful writer herself. And we, we share our writings before they are published. She, she, she read Flint before it was published. A very, very, very dear friend of mine. Excellent. And a wonderful author herself. Francisco. Hey. Uh, congratulations for your, your book. I, I, <laughs> yes. Uh, now you can hear me? Yes. Ah, okay. Uh, well, you, you introduced me to Gothic literature. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, you're and I'm glad to a ghost in the 21st century. 
me let me my connection. Yes, or maybe you can write the the the, the question in the chat. In, in the meantime, is there anyone else who would like to comment something? Steve? Steve Brooks? Thank you. Is that better? Yes. Is that better? Yes, that's better. Sorry, Steve, you come up yeah. after Francisco. Yeah, it's because we have two Wi-Fi lines and sometimes uh, the connection gets worse. Uh, I was saying that you introduced me to Gothic literature and it's really nice to see your voice writing Gothic literature in the 21st century. And in English, I mean, Gothic literature is meant to, read, to be read and written in English. I don't know why it has to do it because it sounds natural mm -hmm. and your writing sounds natural. And I love that your, your voice is, your inner soul hasn't uh, get any older. <laughs> So, <laughs> no, I'm getting, uh, uh, sorry, uh, it's, it's very pleasant to, to, to hear your inner voice, as youthful as always, and as so full of feelings about life, and a yeah, the sense of your the sensibility, sensibility. It, it transmits even through the internet and don't, don't be afraid of online technologies to promote your work because the feelings get through. Don't be, don't be afraid about that. Thank you, Francisco. Francisco uh, is a friend of many, many, many years as well, and a writer, and I used to lead a horror literature workshop in Francisco, that's where I met him, and, and our very dear friend Armando was there as well. So it, it, yeah, Armando is a loss for, 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 for us mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And um, it's so beautiful to see you, Francisco. And thank you, thank you for your words and for being always, always there. It's, it's really, really, really beautiful, really moving. And I, I hope Armando is listening somewhere. Yes. <laughs> thank you. I'm sure, I'm sure he is. Um, <laughs> Steve, it, it's your turn, please. <laughs> hey, I need to. Un oh, I'm, yeah, I'm unmuted. Um, well, it, it, it was really beautiful, Adriana. And uh, actually, I was thinking, if you ever decide to uh, create, I know it's difficult enough, writing and then self-publishing, but if you ever do an audio book, then I would love to hear, because your reading is so beautiful. It's just sort of, I mean, I can hear the words. I close my eyes and hear the words, but I hear, you know, your voice, your reading is just so good, um, so so dramatic. It took me right into it. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Um, but, but, but there, there was just something. I mean, I haven't read it, and I, and I absolutely will. It's my next. <laughs> it's my next must read um, uh, thing. But. but, but uh, I was thinking that, you know, when you sort of describe it as elegiac, you know, I mean, that, that, that is, I felt myself actually kind of spinning off from your words and uh, incredible evocation of your, your feelings and experience of these two different people who were part of your life in very different ways and part of your inner life. <laughs> but the, the thing that really hit me was I was kind of connect, I felt myself connecting with um, people who I've lost, mm. um, and, but, but not necessarily through, um, through suicide. And, it, and, and I suppose it's kind of the bigger thing is the sort of the question of, um, yeah, the, the, of death and renewal in general, it seemed to be. And that perhaps, well, I haven't read it yet, so I can't sort of say, but 
do you think that that's what it really became for you the that's really with the initial in, impetus being from the terrible as someone said like the bafflement really of that occurs with suicide but once you get over that point then it's really about the loss yes yes Steve. thank you for saying that and and and, and yes what happened to me is, is also what after the first dream after the initial dream mm. i just started dreaming with people i had lost one dream yeah. after the other so i think it was that very mysterious connection mm. And in, in, in one part of the book that, that you will read, uh, I hope you will read it. Uh, yes, uh, yes, definitely. Uh, I, the day after my friend Armando died, and I, I was in this complete, absolute shock and, and, and really scared, as I said before, that why I had been writing this before. And, and I was walking and it, it was, the spring had gone back to winter and, and there was hail and it was very cold. And suddenly, and I felt just miserable, and I felt completely shocked and, and, and out of it. And suddenly, the hail stopped, and the sunshine came out, and there was this enormous rainbow, this amazing, beautiful rainbow. And mm. there was sunshine on one side, but behind mm. the rainbow, there were clouds. So it was as if the tunnel that I, I had been dreaming mm. of and talking about was on the other side of the rainbow. Mm. And suddenly I thought there was a spark of hope, like feeling, oh, this is it. it it's, this is the tunnel we all come in and out. We, we, yeah. we, we are believing now we will be the dead at some other point. It's just, we are yeah. all together. We are all part of this thing. It doesn't really matter then if you know people or don't know them or mm. it, we are all together. A, a, a great sense of like a communion. Mm -hmm. We are all humans. We are all what we are. Mm. So yes, I, I suppose in a very mysterious way, this this has been a way to of connecting with uh, well with that and 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 the people who have left in my in my life as well. So mm. so in a, in a way, I ended up uh, well. It's a very complicated mixture of feelings. They're very very strange. Mm. Mm. Yeah yeah yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, would anyone else like to ask a question? Oh, Margarita. Yes, I, I remember. She, uh, Margarita is asking, um, do you think that there is a link between Ciudad Oliente de Dios and Flint? Because I can find there is a, an ethereal atmosphere that both share. Um, Hola, Margarita. How 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 nice to 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 see you here. I I don't think so. I think the only link, well, the only link I suppose is my, well, maybe yes. <laughs> the link is what 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 I'm trying to find with with the things I write. And 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 Ciudad Oliente de Dios is a novel that started with 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 the question of, of human pain. So I guess I have. Yes, all my life I've been having, I have had this huge question about what is human pain. And in that sense, I suppose, yes, even there is a part in, 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 in Flint when, 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 when I write and, and what is this thing with me and pain? Why, why, why do I have these dreams? Why? why? So I guess there is a part of me that um, wants to know about suffering. What is suffering? What is it? So yes, maybe that's the link. The link is that I, well that I wrote it and I have like this existential question that I've had all my life. Thank you. Thank you. We have another question on the chat um, from Carlos Martinez. Mm -hmm. He writes, the book is about loss, but is it also about music, rock, excess, the other common link between characters? Uh, well, that's quite interesting, yes, and, and, and that, um, that's a question that, that, that the dream forced me to ask myself, because uh, as I said, when I, when, when, I, when I first knew of the prodigy, I thought, yeah, they, they, are, they, are, they are really good, but they are scary. And that's something that then later I learned that, that, that Keith Flint hated 
people saying that he was scary and and um, he just did what he did but i did <laughs> find find them scary so when i started to, to look at who, who he was to write this book and i saw those videos of their of their concerts live and i thought this is just too much and this is um I'm, I'm not used to this thing. What is it? But then I remember that uh, come on, Adriana, you, you spent, you grew up with rock music, and, and 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 I mean, as I said before, I like love to watch the Who was smashing guitars, and I mean, I, I cannot pretend that I'm just this like a uh, the poet in the in the in the hill writing bucolic poems, and and I've I've been enamored in a way all my life of these figures of. Um, that, that portray excess. One of the, my my first uh, passionate uh, uh, readings when I was very young was the the chance of Maldoror. I mean, come on. <laughs> so I thought, well, I sort of reconcile with that I, uh, as I watched the prodigy, and, 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 and there are some things in their videos that I find quite too violent. I think no, I I can't do violence. But I also calm down, and I thought, well. It's human, people, have, and, and we live in a very complex society, which is where rock music was born. A very complex society. It's not only entertainment. There is a lot of, I talk about that in the book as well. And in some parts, I talk, I, I wonder about this society, that the, the way for, for young people to express themselves as alive in as, in, in as try this to center the 20th and the 21st century, which have been so, <clears throat> so, bloody and so terrible in so many ways well it has to come with violence and and, and with some kind of violence and at least it's it's uh, it's violence dancing and music but but not killing people which is what other people are doing so i i sort of thought well it's just because you don't like electronic music it doesn't mean that this is something you don't know anything about because that would be so insincere because i spent so much of my life it, close to rock music and, and, and I do not have this kind of a, I mean, I am a Buddhist now and, <laughs> and some friend, Buddhist friends are here, very dear Buddhist friends and, um, and I hope they won't be shocked to, 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 to hear that I, I, I do have this kind of enamored feeling for excess. <laughs> not that I'm, I live in excess now, I'm, I'm quite mellowed, but um, yes, I think that, that it, it, it's a way that we've had um, as humans of saying uh, I, we don't like the way the world is now just we don't like it and, 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 and let's just break the whole thing and, and start again no matter how so yes there, there is that, that connection and, 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 and I, I learned throughout writing this piece and, 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 and looking at the videos and everything I learned to respect more that the, the, this one that I didn't uh, like very much before. <laughs> I thought, oh, well, they're, they're good. I, I respect them more now. I, I, I actually wish I, I have seen a show live. Maybe I would have died with the lights, but uh, yeah, it's a very interesting question. And I, I asked myself that as well. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, it's seven o'clock. We have time for one final question. If, if there is one. Oh, Luzel Lourdes, hello. Thanking you and, and praising you very deservedly. <laughs> it's been so beautiful to, to share this with all of you. Yes. you. You can't imagine how, how, how moving, how beautiful. Oh, okay, so here come the, the, the the applause and the hugs and the kisses. You so can you can show your face you now. Please. Show your face now if you want. Yes, uh, I want to see you. Are delighted to have all of you here. Thank you for for taking the time <laughs> to be in, in 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 one more Zoom. I hope this was refreshing. Um, Thank you so much. And, Thank and you. It, been fantastic to have this experience, Adriana. Thank you. Thank you for for giving the world a word a work like Flint. And uh, I invite all of you to to read it. Her website is posted in the chat. And um, I I look forward to to hearing more from you, Adriana. Let's see what we can come up with in in the future. Thank you, everybody.
Thank you all so much. Thank you, Anna Elena. Thank you, El, and thank you, every single one of you there. I, I, I really love you. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. Bye. Bye. How nice. Bye. 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 Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Vero. Bye. 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 Sandra, Francisco, Steve. Alejandro Luce Lourdes, bye. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm. Y mil gracias, Anelena. Bye. Bye.